नमो रमणा प्रोस्ट्रेशन स्टे रमणा शाइनिंग एज द सेल्फ इन ऑल बीइंग्स वी बिगिन टुडेस सत्संग व्हिच इज अ स्पेशल ऑफरिंग इन द कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ द एडवेंट ऑफ भगवान टू अरुणाचल इन दिस मंथ ऑफ सितंबर विद थॉट्स ऑफ भगवान्स एडवेंट टू अरुणाचल एंड आल्सो विद अ होमेज टू Ganesha, as we just celebrated Ganesha Chaturthi yesterday, we have today's satsang, commencing with a prayer by Shri Mati Sapna Ganesh, followed by the chanting of Mukta Tatrayam by Nanda Kumar Ji. Dakshina Murti Sarambham शंकराचार्यमध्यमाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा वंदे गुरुपरंपरा वंदे गुरुपरंपरा शुक्लांबरधर विष्णु शशिवर्ण चतुर्भुज प्रसन्न वदन ध्यानोपात आंगिक भुवन यचिक सर्वांगमय आहार्यम चंद्रताराधी तम नम सात्विक शिव ओ नमो भगवते श्रीरमणा हृदय कुमार मध्य केवल Oh, yeah. 
to give which he came to Thiruvannamalai on the 1st of September 1896 to take us all to that natural abode of the self. Chanting of Upadesh Saram verses by Ashwini Balaji and Uma Shri Bhadi. Namo Ramana Vayurodhana ಕ್ಲೀಯತೆ ಮನ ಜಾಲ ಪಕ್ಷಿವ ದ್ರೋಧ ಸಾಧನ ಚಿತ್ತವಾಯವಿಕ್ರಿಯುತ ಶಾಖಯೋ ದ್ವೈ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಮೂಲಕ ಲಯ ವಿನಾಶನೆ ಉಭಯ ರೋಧನೆ ಲಯಗತ ಪುನರ್ಭವತಿ ನೋ ಮೃತ ಪ್ರಾಣಬಂಧನ ಕ್ಲೀನ ಮಾನಸ ಚಿಂತನಾಶಮೇತ್ಯದ ನಷ್ಟ ಮಾನಸೋತ್ಕೃಷ್ಟಿ ಕೃತ್ಯಮಸ್ತಿ ಕಂ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ಯತ ದೃಶ್ಯವಾರಿ ಚಿತ್ತಮನ ಚಿತ್ವದರ್ಶನ ತತ್ವದರ್ಶನ ಮಾನಸ ತು ಕಂ ಮಾರ್ಗಣೆ ಕೃತೆ ನೈವ ಮಾನಸ ಮಾರ್ಗ ಆರ್ಜವಾತ್ ವೃತ್ತಯಸ್ವಹಂ ವೃತ್ತಿಮಾಶ್ರಿತ ವೃತ್ತಯೋ ಮನೋ ವಿದ್ಯಹಂ ಮನ ಅಹಮಯ ಕುತೋತಿ ಚಿನ್ವತ ಐಪತತ್ಯಹಂ ನಿಜ ವಿಚಾರಣ ಅಹಮಿನಾಶಭಾಜ್ಯಹಂತಯ ಸ್ಫುರತಿ ಸ್ವಯಂ ಪರಮ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಸ ನಮೋ ರಮ Namur Ramana, we go on to the section of Ramananjali Sangeetha and Srimati Radha, the company of Vavala, will be presenting a special number, a Ramananjali number on Ganesha and this will be followed by Srimati Pratibha Sundaresh presenting a composition of Murugana Swami. wherein he says that Ramana is the master of proper placement. It's then surprising that he placed himself at Thiruvannamalai for all the world to turn to him as Thiruvannamalai, he says, is the center of the universe. Ramana Anjali Sangeetha by Srimati Radha and Srimati Pratipa. Namo Ramana to all. Today I am presenting a composition written by, written and composed by Kalai Mamani, Dr. Ambika Kameshwar. It's in Ragam Hamsadvani, set to Tala Malikai. Gaja Mukhana ನಿಜ ಗುಣ ಬೋಧ ಕರುಣೈ ಪೂರಿವ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಘ್ನೇಶ್ವರ ಗಜ ಮುಖನಾದ ನಿಜ ಗುಣ ಬೋಧ ಕರುಣೈ ಪೂರಿವ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಘ್ನೇಶ್ವರ ಗಜ ಮುಖನಾದ ಗುರು ಸ್ವರೂಪಮಾಯ ಉಲಖಿಲ್ ವಂದೆ ಮೈ ಕಾಕುಂಗೀಶ 
Namo Ramana. We continue the offering of Ramana Anjali Sangeeta by Revati Shankar. Om Namo Bhagavate Shri Ramanaya. We are, by the grace of Bhagavan, meditating on Ramana Suprabhatam. Suprabhatam is a musical awakening to the Lord to begin the day by waking up. Anything, when we begin something, we, we are reminded of the Lord who destroys, who removes all the obstacles, Lord Ganesha. Since we celebrated Ganesha Chaturthi yesterday, I present to you a song written by Sadhvam Swami, music by Srimati Sulochana Natarajan, Kannada translation by Dr. Shada. Since we are beginning the Suprabhatam meditation, Manana on Suprabhatam, I thought we will seek the blessing of Lord Ganesha and move forward. Sakrupenda Nada Kavya Dina Najikwe Yelli Udaisi Sakrupenda Nada Kavya Dina Najikwe Yelli Udaisi Lord Ganesha. To start off with the first verse, Raudi ha pakshini hava parito mayuraha Tvadrupa sannidhi viyoga vashadi vaiva Tvamahvayanti pashavo nijagoshtha gokonat Ananda chitra manabhotava suprabhatam Good morning, O oh, Ramana, the Supreme. Ramana, the Supreme Consciousness Bliss. Flocks of birds and peacocks, as though unable to bear the separation from you, are calling aloud. Cows from their places in cowshed are moving to welcome you. Let us welcome Ramana with the manana of Ramananjali music from the next week. Om Namo Bhagavate Shri Ramana. Namo Ramana. We continue today's satsang. We have a special offering today from 
Savitri Krishna. She had done some spe uh, specific manana on the journey of Bhagavan to Arunachala, reaching there on the 1st of September. And she gives her offering by making a kulu or an arrangement in her home. And this she has shared with a narration of the story of Bhagavan's advent to Arunachala. We will be sharing that video with the devotees today. Choice 
but to walk the remaining 30 miles to Tiruvannamalai. After a walk of 11 miles, he reaches Aryani Mallu. Unaccustomed to such a long walk in hot sun, he is very fatigued. He takes rest in the temple's pillared hall, where he suddenly encounters a flash of light which later disappears. At that point of time, he wasn't aware that he was actually sitting next to the uh, statue of St. Yana Samandar. He requests for food, but is turned down by the priest. He however asked him to accompany to Kilo, where he could try his luck. In Kilo temple too, the one is very food. But out of sympathy, the temple drummer offers his share of food to Bhagavan. Fitting that he was He falls unconscious in the streets of Kedu. It was quite late in the evening. One of the residents of village of that village, uh, Sri Muthu Krishna Bhagavata, takes Venkatraman home. The next morning, the 31st of August 1896, is Gokulashtami. The affectionate lady of the house offers him a sumptuous meal and also packs sweet meats for him on his onward journey. Unable to cover the rest of the distance by foot, Venkatraman pledges his earrings to Bhagavata and is offered rupees four. He then proceeds to the railway station, realizes that the train to Tirvannamalai is only the next morning, hence he sleeps in the railway station overnight. The next morning, on the 1st of September 1896, Venkatraman reaches Tiruvannamalai. From there, he directly heads to the temple. Surprisingly, there is not a single soul around and the gates are wide open. Venkatraman rushes to the Sanctum Sanctorum and embraces the Lingam in utter ecstasy, reporting to his father. Om Pitura Deshata Shona Shailam Prapta Inamaha. Namo Ramana. Like the great epics, any number of retellings of Bhagavan's journey to Arunachala and every aspect of his life is ever rejuvenating, ever purifying, and ever takes us back to the source, our true nature. So, we have some more reading about Bhagavan's life and teachings. The reading will be presented along with the sharing by Nanda Kumarji. In this the book reading segment of our satsang, uh, we are embarking on the reading of this work by our founder president again, edited and compiled by our founder president, Sri Hayar Natarajanji. <coughs> the work is, for our is in the now, the timeless message of Sri Ramana Maharishi. Forever is in the now. We have gone through the foreword by our former president, Sri R. Venkatraman, <coughs> and we are partly through the introduction by uh, our founder president. So I backtrack a little bit in the introduction so that there is continuity and go ahead with the reading of the introduction. That which is termed the mind is only varied and innumerable thoughts with the core, the center, the individual. It is the individual's attention to a particular thought which gives life to it. This must be so because given the fact of the existence of an army of thoughts, only a particular thought that to which the individual has paid attention is on the thought horizon 
at any given point of time. Therefore, the key to understanding the mind lies in keeping the searchlight focused on the individual. What would such a searchlight reveal? It would reveal addiction to movement from thought to thought, like the wind which is constantly blowing. This situation arises because of the thought thrust and the weight of the tendencies embedded in the heart. They keep sprouting depending on the outer circumstances. Attention of the individual is on these thoughts, which are in a constant flux and is never therefore single focused. It is scattered. Where does the solution lie? So long as we keep paying attention to individual thoughts, or as Ramana would say, so long as we run with the running mind, we are foredoomed. For unless one tackles the thinker to whom the thoughts relate, one would only be substituting thought A for thought B, desire C for desire D, and so on. You can never switch off thoughts unless you learn to pay attention to the individual and not to his thoughts. From here, we start the fresh reading. We might say that self-attention is what is required. Ramana says that this is achieved by questioning the truth about the individuality. In order to find out the true import of the I, this attention would be like letting off steam from a steam engine. The thought momentum will come to a grinding halt as long as attention stays fixed on the I. This weapon in the armory of self-attention should be supplemented further by what may be termed as source consciousness. The quietened mind's attention has to be turned inward to its pure source. This is achieved by querying whence this I. Then the individual current of consciousness merges in the universal current of consciousness, the heart, like a river merging in the ocean. The mind is then restored to its natural condition. As Ramana would say, our minds are now resting in outward objects. The mind resting in its source is its natural condition. There is a gradual transformation as one gathers strength in inwardness and inherence in the heart. The thought tortured mind becomes tranquil. Its workaholism, result orientation, anxieties and fears drop off like leaves from a tree in autumn. The mind would have found its moorings in its original state. Joy inundates spontaneously. Life blossoms forth in all fullness. The inward, the interior interning of the mind to its source is the way. But a mind fattened by ceaseless thoughts, a mind habituated to externalization would evade one's effort. Hence, it is important to remember that the mind is essentially like ether. It is a pure reflection of consciousness. It is therefore, <clears throat> it has therefore the capacity to observe and retain in memory whatever object or matter its attention is bestowed on. All that we take in through the senses is food for the mind. The photographic negative, a blotting paper type of absorption takes place. So, the input is important. It is in this context that the statement, what we think that we become, what we think that we become is made. <clears throat> if the mind's attention is given to purposeless thoughts, negative thoughts and so on, the mind becomes colored and polluted by them. When the body has a system of throwing out the junk food and excessive inputs, the mental garbage remains imprinted in memory. Garbage in is garbage in. The mind, which is like a white cloth, gets dirty. These thoughts weaken and enervate the mind. <clears throat> the importance of not paying attention to non-functional thoughts, to thoughts other than those required for performance of one's duties, arises in this context. Time is the most scarce commodity and frittering away of mental energies would be tragic for the time allotted by karma is limited and uncertain. It, it is true that the turning the mind inward is like putting it through a washing machine. But what happens is that 
the load of useless and debilitating thoughts makes the interning which is so necessary difficult and tardy. Hence, the need for the caution of what we eat, what kind of thoughts we dwell on. <coughs> so, uh, the, the author is giving us the caution that along with the sadhana of going in, one should have the vairagya to keep away from those streams of thoughts. Spiritual interning <coughs> is always a hurdles race. The scriptures warn that there will be many obstacles in the path for the virtuous, path of the virtuous. For the mind is used to its egocentric ways. So the seesaw of positive and negative thoughts, steadfastness and listlessness, courage and diffidence goes on. One of the common complaints to Ramana used to be, I am not pure, I am too weak, my circumstances are against me, and so on. The surest way to handicap oneself, Ramana would say, is to think one is handicapped. Or it is not true. Why is it not true? Because one is essentially pure. Thoughts of impurity, good, bad, and the like relate only to the content of the mind and not to its core. The very purpose of fixing the attention on the eye is to cut off the sovereignty of the innumerable thoughts over us. Self-attention stops conceptualization as it takes place by freezing the thought movement. Thus, it provides a means to bypass the clogging and deadening of the mind by a glut of thoughts. In this context, Ramana would stress the need to lead a recollected and unhurried life. This is something which uh, uh, Natarajan sir has uh, reminded us again and again. I will read that. In this context, Ramana would <coughs> stress the need to lead a recollected and unhurried life. The recollection is of the strength giving, strength giving fact that the mind is of the nature of consciousness and therefore fresh and unsullied, unhurried because an over busy schedule of our own making leaves no time for such reflection. Our result-oriented mind where varies too soon, forgetting that the harvest will come in due season. The results will be there, but intangibly. The mind will be more in equipoise, less concerned with its little world of anxieties and fears. One would be considerate, more giving and loving. All this cannot be measured, but flowering would be there in gentleness, true humility, and humaneness. Ramana would also remind us that one should have faith that the timing of fruits is best known to God. You do your best and leave God's business to God. In any walk of life, it is only the truly courageous who remain undaunted by situations that reach the cherished goals. The Ramana path is suited to contemporary life with all its endless stresses and strains. There is hardly much time for spiritual practice as such. The time which can be allotted to meditation is often minimal. Circumstances do not permit many to find peace through a cloistered life, to withdraw from the world, from one's duties and avocations to find the truth. But the self-attention which Ramana teaches can be practiced amidst all this din and battle of daily existence. Self-attention for however short a time, acts as an undercurrent of peace which stays through the working hours. At all idle time, during transport, or when no urgent work is on hand, can be used for promoting, for promoting our attitude of inwardness. In the rough and tumble of earnest spiritual practice, it is the grace of Ramana which one can pull through, which can pull one through. His living presence is there as the inner guru, and we are surrounded on all sides by the nectarous flood of his grace. I'll read that again. In the rough and tumble of earnest spiritual practice, it is the grace of Ramana which can pull one through. His living presence is there as the inner guru, and we are surrounded on all sides by the nectarous flood of his grace. 
one has to be constantly in tune with it practicing his presence by being aware of it our body idea is so deep rooted we can of course derive strength and inspiration from his lustrous and powerful eyes from his gentle smile from his exemplary life his sacred words his clarifications to seekers could be constantly referred to and reflected upon or he has given an open book a teaching which can be understood and practiced without any kind of previous preparation or scriptural background all that is needed is the yearning to discover the truth about oneself and the determination not to throw up one's hands until one attains it the attainment being self knowledge given vigilant awakefulness and firm faith in bhagwan's guidance in ramana's guidance one is bound to experience the state of the spacious and free mind the state of natural happiness over the years since the maha nirvana of ramana in 1950 more and more earnest seekers all over the world <coughs> have been studying deeply and contemplating on his sacred words earnest and vigilant pursuit of the ramana path has also brought out in clear light the practical problems which arise a perusal of who's who would would give an idea about the rich galaxy of contributors to this book there are 35 contributors and over 50 articles each one of them exposes us to a facet of the myriad beauty of ramana therefore the title through many minds was thought of for this book <clears throat> therefore the title through many minds was thought of for this book but having regard to the essence of ramana's teachings the present title that is forever is in the now the timeless message of sri ramana maharishi <clears throat> the present title which brings out the immediacy and universal availability of self knowledge has been preferred the book has been divided into three parts the teachings remembering ramana maharshi and the confluence this is because the life and teachings of ramana maharshi are intermingled such a harmonious oneness is possible only in the life of a true seer who is rooted in wisdom as for the transformation of life which ramana bestows one can best quote a verse from murugunar's guruvachaka kovai the glance of deathless sages who live radiant like a hundred suns saves those who bask in it and make them to immortal giving them soon their own supreme awareness verse 1127 the glance of deathless sages the ever present bhagwan who live radiant like a hundred suns saves those who bask in that sun in that light radiant <clears throat> saves those who bask in it and make them to immortal giving them soon their own supreme awareness bangalore 26 february 1993 to a natarajan ji it's a wonderful introduction where sir has covered the whole teachings because bhagwan's teachings are so simple and so much practice oriented from the beginning <clears throat> the teaching is simple and makes us do practice and nothing else grace is indicated through practice and the presence of bhagwan can be felt more and more uh, the more we sincerely practice his teachings we can feel how bhagwan is surrounding us with his grace everything that works in his in our life in the sadhaka's life is having the bhagwan's touch the golden touch the blissful touch is that what which we can see and that's what natarajan sir has highlighted in this wonderful introduction summing up the teachings of bhagwan om namo bhagavate shri ramaya namo ramana the beauty of bhagwan's teachings is always brought home to us by nanda kumar ji and in his emphasis in the reading and in today's presentation we had that beautiful aspect of bhagwan's grace surrounding us 
which also has been emphasized by him as he has contributed the reading. It reminds me of another president, the president of Sri Ramanashram, who was president of Ramanashram when A.R. Natarajan was president of Ramanashi Sethfalani, T.N. Mekat Raman, and uh, subsequently Sundar Ramanan became the president. So T.N. Mekat Raman would say, Bhagavan's grace surrounds me. He would make a, 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 a circumference of 60 feet around me wherever I go. So surrounded by grace and that grace one experiences easily through the path, the practice of the path. We have Sri Dilip Simha conducting the self-inquiry session. No more, Ramana. Dhyaye Charada Chandra Sundara Mukam Tambra Ravindekshanam Bhakta Bhishtavara Bayapradakaram Kaupina Matrojvalam Swatmanandarasa Devivasham Sarvana Vadhyangakam Shri Mantam Shri Ramaneshwaram Guruvaram Yogasana Dhyasitam Dhyaye Shri Ramaneshwaram Dhyaye Shri Ramaneshwaram Dhyaye Shri Ramaneshwaram Hrudaya Kuhara Madhye Kevalam Brahma Matram Yahamahamiti Sakshatatma Rupe Nabhati Hrudivishamana Saswam Chinvata Majjatava Pavana Chalana Rodha Atmanishto Bhavatvam Namo Ramana. We will commence today's Atma Vichara by listening to Bhagavan's Upadesham. I will be reading from Guru Vachika Kovai from the chapter Meditation on the Truth. Verse number 503 on the topic, the greatness of Upadesha, the Guru's teaching. The Gnana Guru actually abides as both the Atma Swarupa and the Shiva Swarupa within the hearts of devotees. Although in their externalized view, he appears and moves around as if he is different from them, true Gnana will not dawn for anyone who has not known experientially through investigation in the heart, the essence of the Upadesha, you are that, which the Guru silently and see unceasingly conveys to his devotees through the language of his gaze. I repeat the verse, the Gnana Guru actually abides as both the Atma Swarupa and the Shiva Swarupa within the hearts of devotees. Although in their externalized view, 
he appears and moves around as if he is different from them true gnana will not dawn for anyone who has not experienced who has not known experientially through investigation in the heart the essence of the upadesha you are that which the guru silently and unceasingly conveys to his devotees through the language of his gaze here the essence of this teaching is to convey that there is only one self which is as which is as the atma swarupa and also as the manifested shiva swarupa though it may externally appear as though different and moving around but essentially it is nothing but one's own self that is everything the self itself is everything like the usual example that we often quote in the dream all that we are dreaming including the dreamer is nothing but one so one oneself similarly in this waking state whatever we are experiencing is nothing but the self unless we see that we are one self is everything there the true gnana will not dawn says the only hindrance to this true gnana from this natural oneness to be not seen is only the form of thoughts the reality given to the thoughts and the thought structures and the content as we read as nand kumar ji read out the content is given more reality than the core it is that which makes us believe the content of the thought which makes us believe that we are all different and therefore in the sense of mind and body because each body looks different each mind seems to behave differently we tend to give we tend to see that difference but we forget to see that awareness that being consciousness sat swabhavato vastu kevalam says bhagwan in sat swarupa there is only one truth and we forget to see that and when we see that and we experience that sat swarupa then the true gnana that all the differences cease and that peace because there is complete unity shines automatically by itself in order to remove this difference causing entity the the thought which rises and causes differences bhagwan has given us this vichara as the way every time a thought rises due to the vasanas and causes the difference we should bhagwan says diligently enquire to whom is this difference to whom is this thought and therefore when we enquire that we see that it is for me the i and therefore when we enquire who am i we are taken to the source when we question what do i refer to as i we are taken to that one source to that one sat swarupa which alone is both the atma swarupa and the shiva swarupa and by repeatedly diving back into it bhagwan assures that the mind will gain enough strength to be absorbed in that source itself in this today's evening talk kameshwar ji was beautifully narrating pariprashnena sevaya dese and that seva is only by removing all these vasanas the real seva to guru is only by removing all the vasanas not any other form of seva so 
what Bhagavan has given through this Atma Vichara is that any vasana which causes the thought to rise and by we diligently inquiring to whom is this, who am I, we are removing that vasana and doing that seva and that is the best way to do seva to the Guru. So with the immense grace of Bhagavan, with which alone we could have come to this direct path and this direct opportunity to do his seva. For the next 10 minutes, let us do Atma Vichara.
ते दक्षिणामूर्ति सारंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा रमणाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा श्रुतिस्मृतिपुरा आल करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर श्लोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्या सूत्रभाष्याृत वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ओ we are doing manana on astamalaka and uh, here shankaracharya asked very deep questions to astamalaka a little boy of 7 oh child who you are whom do you belong to where are you going or heading what is your name and from where have you come these are very they look very ordinary questions but these are very deep questions that Shankaracharya asked Hastamalaka, and the purpose. What is the purpose of this um, this uh, Hastamalaka? Is to get dhrida apraksha jnana, this direct knowledge, doubtless being firm, being firmly mm-hmm. abiding in the in the self. So that's the purpose of this whole Hastamalaka. So we had last in the last satsang we had. In the verse number eight, as the Malaga says, that he conveys mm-hmm. his identity as the Atman, seeing the Acharya visibly pleased, continues further to clear a doubt. And what is the doubt? How can one Atman illumine various intellects simultaneously? I'll read it again. How can mm-hmm. one Atman illumine various intellects simultaneously? Though one charioteer cannot ride many chariots at the same time, so this was the question. This was the doubt, and we came to the verse number nine. I request Sapna to kindly chant the verse, please. Yes, sir. Yatha ne ka chakshu prakasho ravir na krame na prakashi karo ti prakasham. अनेकाधियोस्थ्रबोधिस्वूपोहत्माचक्षु प्रकाशो रवीर्न क्रमेण प्रकाशी कौति प्रकाशम अनेकाधियोस्थ्रबोध सनीपलिस्वूपोहत्मा thank you thank you so this is again i'm reading the uh, the doubt was how can one atman illuminate various intellects simultaneously though one chariot tier cannot ride many chariots at the same time so bhagwan says the just as the sun illumines many eyes and does not illumine the objects one by one in the same way that which is one awareness illumines many intellects i am of the nature of that ever existing atman so when the sun rises in the sky it removes darkness from everywhere all at once causing thousands of lotus flowers to blossom simultaneously not one by one so when the sun rises it removes darkness causing thousands of lotus flowers to blossom simultaneously not one by one in the same way the self also illumines 
the fourfold inner equipment and objects of per perception in all direction all at once the mana manas buddhi chitta hankara are all illumined in all directions all at once the witness nature of atman is further cleared here with a simile of the sun in the following examples the water in different parts may be different clear dirty steady or vibrant the sun illumines all by making its rays reach and touch all types of water simultaneously yet the sun itself remains untouched by the qualities of the water similarly intellects are also of different types namely good bad discriminative impulsive stubborn lenient pure dirty divine devilish and so on the self helps them to manifest and provides the power to perform but itself remains unconditioned the sun soaks and dries up water of different tastes namely sweet sour salty or spicy with the help of its rays itself remaining un unaffected by any of the tastes it cannot be blamed for having drunk the waters for its enjoyment in the same way the consciousness is associated with all good and bad thoughts joys and sorrows in fact without activation from the self these feelings and thoughts cannot emerge yet the self remains the same without becoming happy or unhappy good or bad the self is the nature of bliss so it cannot be charged with being the enjoyer it is beyond doership and enjoyership the sun reflected in intellect if there is a pot sorry if there is a spot on a mirror it is reflected on the face but it is not on the face itself i read this again very important if there is a spot on the mirror it is reflected on the face but it is not on the face itself to remove it the mirror has to be wiped clean not the face similarly good and bad thoughts merits and demerits belong to the mind intellect and not to the self so only purification of the mind is needed the atman is ever pure the jiva has to visit heaven or hell according to good or bad deeds because it has the ego doership and enjoyership but when the jiva realizes its shiva swarupa it is liberated a doubt may arise that actually the ego is insentient jada an inert object like a stone cannot feel anything then how can the ego experience heaven and hell i'll read this question again this is a this is a very important thing we need to do manana on a doubt may arise that actually the ego is insentient an inert object like a stone cannot feel anything then how can the ego experience heaven and hell this can be clarified with the example of an iron heated in fire to give it shape when it is sledged with the hammer the beating has to be taken by the iron and not the heat so when you hit a hammer on a uh, you put a iron rod inside inside the fire then what happens you have to beat it up but what bhagwan says the beating has to be taken by the iron and not the heat the beating is to be given when the iron is hot this is the contact with fire otherwise it cannot be molded similarly the indriyas cannot function without the self the ego takes the onus of doership in false conceit and suffers the atman remains untouched another doubt may arise that the sun is at one place but the atman is omnipresent 
So how can it remain untouched? This can be understood with an example. In a pot filled with water, the sky is reflected and appears to become wet. In a pot, the water with water, the sky is reflected and, and appears to be become wet. Actually, however, it's not conditioned by the water in the pot. Similarly, the chidakasha, the feelings of the mind intellect are reflected, showing joys and sorrows of papa punya, but the self is not affected. One who has attained liberation is beyond the pairs of opposite, Dwandva. He has realized that he is the Atman and not the body. So he is not attached to any enjoyment. But for a seeker who has not reached that stage, worldly affairs are real. So he is asked to abstain from enjoyment. A thought came when we all, were, all were speaking before me that we have a, uh, an experience that we have regularly, you know, and our, our, our Ramana, our MCL people are great at this. You know, when you, when you have your mobile, what do we do? We take selfies, right? We all take selfies. What, what do we mean by selfie? Why don't we say body? Come on, all bodies. We say we will take a selfie. Selfie means what? Selfie is we want to only, we believe that there is only one self. So there may be many bodies, but there is one self. So all in one, if you say, if you ask some of the expert selfie takers in the in RMCL, they they will they pull up pull out their cam, you know, their mobiles which have three cameras, four cameras, but all will be in one. So this is what Dilip also was mentioning. All is in one, and one in all. So all, when you say all in one, mm -hmm. all those bodies come into one selfie. And one in all, that's why we call all everything in, in one. So one is that one is in all. So, so, that, so this is something that uh, when we say the Bhagwan is infinite, he is everywhere. He's omnipresent, he's everywhere. So we are actually, we are all one. So, there, so if you really see that simple example, next time you take, you take a mobile and take, you take a selfie, you must understand that we are not taking the bodies. We are all actually one, one self. That's why we call it selfie. It's just a thought that occurred. I thought we could share it in a lighter sense. I am of the nature of that ever-existing Atman. Astanalka asserts, Oh Guru, by thy grace, I know that I am unattached. To merit, demerit, pleasure and pain. I am Chidatma, who makes the intellect perceive without myself becoming perceiver. I make the senses enjoy without myself becoming the enjoyer. I am the body, I am not the... I am in the body, but I am not the body. I reside where there is no space for space. So the Vedas say that the sun is the Atman of the Jagat. About that, a doubt is raised. So the, the next, typically what happens is in the way Hastamalaka is, there's a doubt which is raised, which is further clarified. So what's the doubt? If the sun is the Atman of the Jagat, then Shurya, uh, Surya Darshana must be Atma Darshana or self-realization. Can it be true? Is the, what we will do, we will do Manana on the next in the next verse so by bhagwan's grace maybe all we we all uh, go within and experience that self which is the only true om namo bhagavate shri ramanaya thank you Namoramana, we continue with the sharing by Dr. Kalarani Rangaswami on Devi Kalyottara. Om Namo Bhagavate Sri Ramanaya 
அருணாச்சலமென அகமே நினைப்பவர் அகத்தை வேற ரூபாய் அருணாச்சலம் நம்ம ரொம்ப நாட்டுவாள் வித் தி அபண்டன்ஸ் கிரேஸ் ஆஃப் பகவான் ஹி ஆர் மெடிடேட்டிங் ஆன் தேவி காலோத்திர ஞான விசாரப்படலம் வெரி கிரேஷியஸ்லி கிவன் டு அஸ் பை பகவான் இன் தமிழ் டுடே வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு மெடிடேட் ஆன் தி எயிட்டீன்த் வேர்ஸ் வெளிவிடயம் பற்றும் விரிமனதார்க்கு என்றும் விளையும் வெகு பந்த ஏது Bhagavan says, for the one whose mind loiters around and concentrates on the worldly objects, the mind gets wider. He will be a person with discriminating mind, with anger, disappointment, hatred, proudly, expectations, desire because of the doership. He thinks he is the body with the name. Bhagavan says, the first position of a person is his body. Around that thought, I am the body, rotates all other thoughts like satellite. Ennangale manam, yavinum, naan yanum, enname, moolama, mundipar. I am this body, my belongings are these, she is my wife, they are my children. I want good things to happen to them. Why? I should be happy by seeing them happy. At that stage, man becomes a desirous person. He is not satisfied with what he has. For satisfying his desire, he goes to any extreme. I will tell you an example. Once a father told his three sons, Oh my dear sons, I am counting my days, I am going to die. I have a small request. When I die, you must keep three lakhs each on my coffin and then only bury. The first two sons kept one lakh each. And what did the third son do? He wrote a check for three lakhs and took off the two lakhs kept by his brothers. So the desire makes a person so cunning. Instead, when one dis- uh, surrenders the mind to God's feet, there will be nothing to aspire for, nothing even to think about. As Bhagavan says in Navamba Nimalai, அடியேனை ஆண்டு அன்றே ஆவி உடல் கொண்டாய் த டே யூ ஹாவ் எம்ப்ரேஸ் மீ யூ டுக் மை பிராணா அண்ட் பாடி ஆஃப்டர் தேட் வில் ஐ பி ஹேவிங் எனி கிரீவன்ஸ் பிகாஸ் கிரீவன்ஸ் இஸ் யூ அலோன் குட் திங்ஸ் ஆர் ஆல்சோ யூ எவ்ரி we can't hear anything mm-hmm. the first two sons nimale adiyene aand andre avi udal kondai the day you have embraced me you took my prana and body after that will i be having any grievances because grievances is you alone good things are also you everything is you enakku or kurai undo குறையும் குணமும் நீ அல்ல சோ எண்ணம் எதுவோ அது செய்வார் கண்ணே உந்தன் கடலினையில் காதல் பெருக்கே தருவாயே ஆப்டர் மை பிராணா பாடி இஸ் யுவர்ஸ் ஐ டோன்ட் ஹாவ் எனி இண்டிவிஜுவல் விஷ் கோ ஹேட் வித் யுவர் ஓன் விஷஸ் பிகாஸ் யூ நோ பெட்டர் வாட் ஐ நீட் சாதுவம் சேஸ் வாழ்வினில் எவையெல்லாம் நாம் வாய்த்திடல் நன்மை உண்டோ நீ அறிவாய் You know very well what is good for me. Tarum vallamayum udaya. You have the capability of giving them to you to me. You are all pervasive. You are the you are in rich, you are in poor, you are in disgrace, you are in good, you are in bad everything. Sadhguru says Bhagwan has made me learn all these. I see nothing else other than Bhagwan in each and every object and happenings. So Oh, desire devil, he calls desire as devil. You are going to come to your rest. Your dance is over and I am no more your slave. I am going to give, I am not going to dance to your tune because Bhagavan has clearly made me understand the fact that there is not, 
thing. There is no happiness in the worldly objects. So, hey, de desire devil, you make your own way without making any noise. So, say, padithamal ni odi marindu urukkolai vai. So, one need not ask anything and he knows better than us. He knows everything. And he is capable of giving us all those that we need. Only thing needed is complete surrender. Because as Bhagavan said, the ordainer control the fate of soul in accordance with their destiny. I'll tell you an example from Ramayana. After Rama's Patabhishekam, Rama was giving away different gifts to all. Vibhishna was to leave to Lanka. Rama asked, what would you like to have? What do you want? And Vibhishna said, I would like to take the statue of Ranganatha to Lanka. It was actually the ancestral property. And no one in the family wanted Rama to give that away. But Rama could not refuse. So he, he gave him that statue. But when Vibhishna was crossing Tiruchirapalli in Tamil Nadu, what happened? He wanted to do Sandhya Vandanam because the time has come for doing Sandhya Vandanam. And he saw the river Kaveri was flowing. But the condition was that he should not keep the statue on the ground because once it is kept, it will get fixed and it, it cannot be removed from that place. So he was looking for someone to hold the statue for some time. And Ganesha took this opportunity. Yesterday we celebrated Ganesha Chaturthi, you know. What he, he planned beautifully, according to the destiny. Disguising himself as a small boy, Ganesha was uh, just passing by that side. On seeing this small boy, he, Vibhishna called him and uh, requested him to hold the statue for some time. And the boy said, I can hold it for a few minutes only because I am getting late. I, when I want to go, I will call you three times. If you don't turn up, I will just keep the idol on the ground and move. And Vibhishna accepted him because there was no one other seen by that side. Okay. Now, Ganesha, what he did, he took the help of Vayu Bhagavan. He said, hey Vayu, Please don't take my voice to the ears of uh, Vibhishana. After some time, when Ganesha called Vibhishana three times, why you did not take Ganesha's voice to the person, Vibhishana? So Vibhishana could not hear him. So Ganesha, as for the earlier deal, kept Ranganathan statue on the ground and it got fixed. When Vibhishana came and saw, he could not take out that ideal from that place. Because he got fixed there, that is how he got Sri Ramanathan at Tirichi. So, Ganesha also has shown us very clearly that only Ishwara Chittam will provide. When we accept all the happenings in our life as Ishwara Chittam, only happiness will be there. There will always be happiness. Nothing other than that. Because in that state there will be no expectations at all. Otherwise, if the mind gets widened and concentrate on worldly objects, if the mind thinks about the worldly things only, it makes more and more attachments. It makes more and more bandha. As said in this 18th verse of Kadevi Kalotra Vichara Padalam, Vili vidayam patrum virimanadark yendrum vilayam begum bandha medu. The person who has thought about only the worldly objects, he'll caught into more and more attachments and he'll be getting reason after reason for attachments. That is, Om Namo Bhagavate Shri Ramana. Namo Ramana. The next offering the satsang is by Ujwal Jagdish of Ramana Chattvarimsha. Mananamon Ramana Chattvarimsha.
ओम नमो भगवते श्री रम रमणाय लोकगुरवे नम रमणाय लोकगुरवे नम रमणाय लोकगुरवे नम रमणाय लोकगुरवे नम यारायात्रन के नाम कुलपति स्थानाय न स्वर्णधी पानाय श्रुति बृंग महेन्द्र दुहि दुर्नसूत गाराय प्रमतेश्वरा सवयसो नई पात्र वीणावृते वासम शोण गिर करोषि भगवन क्रौचाति पेद कृत क्रौचाति पेत कुत पयणि सलू इलि मयूर राज नील नीयलु गंगे पानमाडलु गिरिराज सुतय संयामृत उल्ल वीणय गानव माडुव निन्न वयस्सिन प्रमतेश्वर रिल्ल शोण गिरियलि एके नेलेसिते क्रौंच गिरिय नशिसिद देव एकं वक्त मुक वास विर पाणो न शक्तुत मध्यव न पता कि पृथन पाश्वाशोल पुनरेश मुग्धनयन प्रच्छादने भूजुषा अंतर्धान मुपैशितापो ुसाकुजनर मरुगोसी नलि मरेसलू साध्यवे नगे तान करिपुवे निन्न सो सहोदर निंद रमण निगे लोक गुरु बिगे नमन रमण निगे लोक गुरु बिगे नमन टुडे वी आर सेलिब्रेटिंग रमण कमिंग टू अरुणाचल एंड वी आर सेलिब्रेटिंग द मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ द सेल्फ that is ramana as ganapati and these verses are written by ganapati himself who is the amsha of ganapati who was born as ganapati muni vasishta kavya kanta ganapati muni and who is the embodiment of intellect the vidya ganapati the buddhi ganapati and we see that ganapati muni is questioning ramana telling that oh ramana i know who you are you are my brother sahodara and we both have shared the milk from the same mother uma and you have left the lap of uma and you have come to arunachala and in the first verse that he uh, that i said he is asking why have you come to arunachala we are celebrating ramana coming to arunachala and he is asking why and he himself gives the answer because you are here to shine as the guru and you and it is your compassion that you have left all the comfort that is there in kailasa you have left and you have come here and arunachala we have heard the story of bhagwan ramana where the body had to suffer so much here to be at patal lingam where the uh, the vermins and the insects were troubling him and he had wounds all over his thighs and he says that after the gnana i was uh, the state is like as if in a hut a huge elephant is tried to enter and it's going to stay in the small hut such, such was the situation of the body and there was no food for some days and ramana used to say whenever there is food 
we celebrate dwadashi when there is no food it is ekadashi and so much of difficulty and we have no in the his compassion where uh, kvs mama in one song says nin nanbukku ina ed he mentions that how can we talk about your compassion or ramana because to save one small squirrel you broke your shoulder collar bone and and you gave yourself your left uh, thighs you gave yourself to those uh, hornets which whose nest you accidentally you disturbed and what is what can we talk about your compassion it is only that compassion of that subramanya swarupa tarakaripo the one who destroyed the tarakasura and one who destroyed the kaunja giri he with lot of compassion to be available to the whole world as the guru he has come to arunachala and what is the purpose when we see the same verse that the questioning of uh, ganpati muni we see the answer also for what you have come to this world to make us realize to understand that what we understand of ourselves is only the vesha what needs to be done is vesha alam the vesha has to be removed to understand our own divinity to understand ramana we have this vesha that we think we are this body we are this mind we are the intellect we are this and we are that this vesha that we are holding on has to be removed to understand the true nature of ramana so ganapati muni says oh ramana i know why you have come to arunachala you have come why don't you do it right away why don't you bless the whole world by removing the veshas that we are holding on to show your true nature uh, to the all the common man who are fooled by this the instruments called the eye and the mind and they are fooled so you have come as the guru to remove that ignorance and shine as the self and when we see who is ramana and who is ganapati muni who is ganapati we see that they both have risen from the uma we can see uma as that chinmayi as that mother who is shining in every heart that mother who is waiting for all the her children to come back to their lap so that she can feed her amrita to all of them and both ganapati and purga swarupa ramana have risen from the same chinmayi and they have come with a purpose with a purpose to remove us remove the ignorance in the world and to make us realize our own true nature by that we understand the true nature of ramana to and ganapati mun uh, ramana himself he confirms that what ganapati muni is telling is right he is the subramanya swarupa in a verse written by bhagwan sri ramana maharshi he says பின்வந்தான்பதி we all know that it is subramanya who came as the little brother of ganapati and he is asking oh ganapati as soon as you were born you made your own father a pichanti you made a beggar of your own father because as soon as we know the story of how shiva unknowingly he cut the head of ganapati whom parvati had created from herself and after that when parvati cried to shiva shiva became a pichandi and he started going around the world with his gadas in search of a face that would fit that little boy and they brought the face of the elephant and was placed and he gave his own life to this ganapati and who is ganapati he is the very life of shiva and parvati when we have seen in the puranas that ganapati never came out of uh, never came away from his parents we know that in the story of the gnanapalam that ganapati went around his own uh, using his intellect he went around shiva and parvati and got the gnanapalam but muruga we know that he as soon as the competition was announced he quickly got on to his vahana which is mayura and he went around the world 
and then we wonder ayo this muruga is foolish we may think but why did muruga do this because he had to bless the whole world by the circumambulation so with his compassion to shine as the guru and be available to the whole world he went round the world and when he again came to the kailasa he acted as if he was very very disappointed and he came down to south and stayed in kumar kumara parvata it is said and do you know what happened shiva parvati followed him and they also came and they stayed at shri shaila and the shri shaila which is in south of india also became very very auspicious because shiva and parvati are staying there trying to convince muruga to come back to kailasa and that very same muruga he came as ramana to tirunamalai to stay there and to be available to the guru but we all know that arunachala is no different from the ardhanarishwara swarupa of shiva and parvati so ramana who has come as the pinvandan of as the little brother of ganapati is saying at trivannamalai and he says oh ganapati you are the compassionate one are you stone hearted kal and jo are you stone hearted why don't you please see me and why don't you talk to me he says and that is the prayer which ganapati heard and he ganapati muni came and spoke to ramana and he documented all that was spoken in the presence of ramana as various works including the ramana geeta that we are meditating and we salute to that ganapati and subramanya swarupa ramana who are very same as the chinmayi who have risen from the chinmayi and whose true nature is that mother and we pray to that motherly love to take care of us om namo bhagavate shri ramaya namo ramana we are meditating in the satsang on the 108 names of bhagavan the ramana ashtottara shatanamavali and we are on the nama shrimat dwadashanta mahasthale labdha vidyodayaya namaha shrimat dwadashanta mahasthale labdha vidyodayaya namaha in this nama vishwanath swami tells us about bhagavan's education in madurai and he calls it dwadashanta mahasthala he refers to it as dwadashanta mahasthala so what is the meaning of the dwadashanta mahasthala it is said to be the 12th the last chakra we have all heard of the six chakras which are said to be in the body and some people see it as seven chakras some say the shat chakra there are six chakras in the body and it is said there are six chakras in the macrocosm in the world and the ultimate the 12th one is dwadasha anta and where mother meenakshi resides i had asked shri ji kameshwar for an explanation about this and he sent me this reference the 12th chakra system includes the seven primary chakras inside the body and five transpersonal chakras outside the body the seven primary chakras are the root the sacral the solar plexus the heart the throat the third eye the eyebrow and the crown the five additional chakras are transpersonal chakras which integrates the spiritual and transcendent aspects of the human experience so we know about the the chakra sadhana and in that ganesha is the starting point the mooladhara and here we find that meenakshi is the 12th 
she is a dwadasha anta she is the 12th so this is the journey it is the yogic journey which bhagavan completes in the space of madurai this is what vishwanath swami is indicating the vidya that is in this plane in the microcosm in the manifest realm there is something to be learned and that which is to be learned has to be learned within by this power the the movement of this energy but what is the journey to arunachala says bhagavan it is the journey from the ultimate in the manifest back to the heart so it is the crossing of the boundaries of the frontiers of all vidya of all learning it is the transcendence of learning so the journey which starts with ganapati who is also called the vidya ganapati as referred to by ujwal as well he is the beginning or the aadhara the foundation for learning and then what happens in the gnana all that is learned is subsumed it is surrendered why is it surrendered because there is an understanding that the very one who learns is actually non existent it is a myth he is a an illusion the sense of i am the body is an illusion so we see the play of bhagavan born at tirichuri tirichuri means the sacred whirlpool which stands for the the transcendence of the cyclical births and deaths cycles the cycles the repeated cycles which keep pulling us spilling us drowning us that whirlpool is transformed by making it into the divine whirlpool by by completely capturing us in the divine in the clutch of the divine it completely counters the whirl in which we are caught the whirl of the mind in which we are caught karichuriye arike tirichuri it is said to to destroy that cycle of births births that is shiva is manifest as tirichuri and being born there bhagavan does his vidya abhyasa that's why vishwanath swami says द्वादशात महास्थले लब्ध विद्योदयाय नम एंड इट इज इट इज अ ब्यूटीफुल नाम लब्ध विद्यो उद विद्या उदय द बिगिनिंग ऑफ लर्निंग इन अ वे बिकॉज व्हाट भगवान लर्न देयर इवन इन इन अ मैनिफेस्ट सेंस वाज वेरी लिमिटेड एंड once he got his gnana there that is the real vidya he got the atma vidya was born in him in madurai maha shakti nipatena prabuddhaya nama he became the prabuddha he became the fullness of knowledge and that is when all learning came to him as it were ganapati muni came to him he came to bhagavan and he surrendered to bhagavan as if to say that all learning is surrendered at the feet of gnana at the feet of the jeevan mukta that is the ultimate goal to show that muni having learned everything having epitomized the vedas having epitomized the mantra gnana which is ganapati he is pranavakara he is the beginning of all nada so ganapati muni embodying all the mantra gnana came and surrendered to his younger brother skanda because younger brother because in the spiritual journey after labdha vidyodaya there is mahashakti nipata it comes 
later, isn't it? So it is the younger brother to whom the elder brother surrenders. The learning surrenders to the Atma Vidya. And that is the beauty of that learning. That is the beauty of that Vidya. That is the beauty of that Vidya which has the grace of Ganapati. And that is the journey which Bhagavan takes us through in his life. He allows us to have our own learnings in this world, in this manifestation. Whatever learning we have to, we have to acquire. Bhagavan allows us to acquire that learning. And then he brings us to the point when we should be ready to offer it all to him as the self. Om Namo Bhagavate Sri Ramanaya. We continue with the chanting of verses from Akshara Manamale by Radha and Valla. And the satsang will be concluded with Ashtotra Puja to Bhagavan offered at Dilip Simha's altar. And the chanting will be done by Vaibhavji, Prarthana, Uma and Ashwini. The RT song will be offered by Revati Shank. Aruna Chela Shiva, Aruna Chela Shiva, Aruna Chela Shiva, Aruna Chela. Aruna Chela Shiva, Aruna Chela Shiva, Aruna Chela Shiva, Aruna Chela. Aruna Chela Mena Hame Ninne Pavar Hathai Vera Rupa. Aruna Chela. Arag Sundaram Pola Vahum Niyumutra Abhinam Ayirapom. Aruna Chela. Aham buhum di tun aha guhai shira ya ya mar vita den kul aruna chala Aare ka vena ya dana ya gati di la ki lam pariti dum aruna chala Ippari tapu na ye ni na pitta ye ni ya vidwar aruna chala Indrido manna ye peri darul puri wo idu wo una darul nana chela una ye maatri wo na dulatin melu rudi ya giru pa yaru na chela pushur trulam bida unai kanda dangila unna dagai kaatar na chela yenna ya di ti.
नमो 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 रमण सदा शिव प्रभावरण नमो महर्षि नमो महर्षि दर्शन सुख मंगल मुख सकल जीव हित सम्मुख ब्रह्म संघिए सदा तुष्ट सदा हृष्ट सदा शिवानंद पुष्ट परम महर्षि ब्रह्म निष्ठ समदर्शी नमो 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 रमण सदा शिव प्रभावरण नमो महर्षि नमो महर्षि नम मन वोंदु काड़ुनी नरीति हे अदर जाडु हितव नरितु नीडु तेम्म कोरेय तणिसलई बेडलेंदु बंद नावु नोडिये तणिवे वैय मोडिगारने हितव नुडिरु कोरे नम्मनु ब्रह्म संगिये नमो 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 रमन सदा शिव प्रभावरन नमो महर्षी नमो महर्षी नमो 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 रमन सदा शिव प्रभावरन नमो महर्षी नमो महर्षी बोलो भगवान श्री रमन श्री की जय 